On this episode, we speak with Katherine Warren, creative, spiritual teacher, and producer about womanhood. Guys, there's some space for you to learn from this show too. Listen in as we dive into the life experiences, aka life experiments, we all go through when developing on this journey of self-discovery, right here on Life Club. I'm Tashima Jones. Welcome to Life Club. I genuinely believe personal development unlocks the door to the abundant and wonderful life we all already have. I also believe we must be intentional about seeking out that life in order to find and fulfill it. I am so grateful your journey of discovery has led you all the way here. Let's keep moving forward together. Once again, welcome to Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. So we are back. That's one of them songs you just got to listen to really, really loud. <laughs> you are tuning in to Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. As always, I am super excited about today's topic. We are speaking about womanhood. Womanhood is a very sacred space, and so is manhood to all of my brothers out there. But today we're talking about the woman. It requires intention and wisdom. It also requires a teacher, but oftentimes many of us, for whatever reason, may not necessarily have that role model or direct mentorship that is needed. I myself have been challenged with understanding womanhood and what it truly means to look like and to be a woman joining us today is Brooklyn native Miss Catherine Warren, the creator of the Kitty Rose a Lifestyle, featuring eye-opening conversations about community growth, fashion, art, and entertainment. In 1998, Catherine left corporate America and set forth on the path of entrepreneurship. In 2013, Catherine took on the role as director of Bear Elements, a pilot created by Unveiled, Unlocked, and went on to produce radio and TV show content, including Natural Sessions and a short documentary named The Untilted journey recently screened at NBFF. These opportunities have led Catherine on this journey of discovering her passion for storytelling and inspiring others. Catherine is also an ordained minister with the Universal Life Church, spreading the message of loving and accepting Jehovah in one's life. In addition, she has lent a helping hand as a volunteer project coordinator of the Mary J. Blige Center. Catherine's main purpose and goal is to teach and heal from all the experiences we face and to embrace acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I welcome you, Miss Catherine, a.k.a. Kitty Rose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome, <Ow>. welcome, <laughs> welcome. Super excited to have I am as well. you here. So for every guest, we are going to jump into our Dreams They Do Come True segment as well as the same seven. Okay. So up first. What is your ultimate dream? My ultimate dream. I have a few, so I don't know if I have an ultimate dream. Oh, no, I'll take that back. I guess my ultimate dream is to live righteous enough that if the resurrection hope is real, that I'm a part of that journey so that I can get the opportunity to live in paradise earth forever and ever because I enjoy life too much to want it to end mm, <laughs> that's good right there okay. that, that was good <laughs> <laughs> all right mm. so uh, for the same seven it is our rapid fire round of questions are you ready okay all righty so. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite color yellow okay cool. I know that one. Good stuff. Good yes. stuff. It's bright. <laughs> How do you stay healthy? Man, listen, I pray and we'll hope for the best. No. <laughs> Wait, but right on. on some real though, um, I take advantage of my health co coverage and I see mm. my doctor. I do not play with that. I see her on a regular basis. I might see her too much. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, I believe in using my insurance and doing that preventive health care mm. if possible. So that's probably what I do. Good, good, good. What song best describes your life? Man, what Mary song don't? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> every song yeah. Mary J. Blige makes. <laughs> but if I have to choose one, I would say My Life mm-hmm. from Mary J. Blige, um, which is the soundtrack to some other stuff we'll talk about later. But yeah, I don't know if there is one song, but name a song of Mary and I'll be that's it. But Good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Same mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Same Even here. Even though she was playing Beyonce a second ago, <laughs> got me cut on live. Like they about to <laughs> punish me. <laughs> Okay, (laughs) when do you feel most like yourself? Crazy, but probably when I'm with the kids. Mm, When I'm with my my kids. And the reason why I say crazy, because I wasn't eager to be a parent. Okay. So for that to probably be the realest, um, I don't mind the day-to-day, but I'm probably always on performance level, some kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's probably the only time that I am not performing mm-hmm. is when I'm mom, when that's I'm with the so kids. Cool. Yeah. That's good. No. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, if you could go anywhere in space and time, where would it be and why? Well, to be honest, I really think we're funny, even though everything is happening the way it is, I think we're probably living in one of the best times of history. Mm. So I don't know if there's any time before that. Um, Because it's always been some type of craziness, which Mm -hmm. is still now going on. Maybe I'd probably like to be when, like, the Moors were the ones Mm. that ruled the earth and be some queen, you Mm -hmm. know, with all these male (laughs) servants around (laughs) me Mm -hmm. on on the Nile somewhere. But um, the future... Mm. I am. Um, I was a Trekkie. I, no, we're not really a Trekkie, but I was raised on Star Trek, like most '80s babies or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I am. I am so impressed with man's ability to create that I'm excited to see almost mm. want to jump start what they're gonna do next because you already good. know they're doing some stuff. That's good. So and I didn't curse. See, I was gonna say some, sh- <laughs> <laughs> but I'm expected to Shima today. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What advice would you give to your younger self? Pay attention to that third eye, mm. that gut, that gut. Yeah, That's I wish good. I wish I did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish I wish I didn't learn that it was real so later on. Mm. So if I could tell my younger self anything, to I wish I would have paid attention more to that, knowing that the third eye was real, knowing that that mm. gut was was actually a real thing that happens yes that's mm-hmm. good i'm hearing like real <laughs> but in a different level yeah. you know you yeah, know how you hear you hear i'm hearing with the third you know mm-hmm. that sixth sense and mm-hmm. seeing with that third eye and that word real is definitely sticking out to me so yeah we're gonna see loud on that real quick <laughs> um and last but not least in your own words what is the definition of life understanding Drop mic. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Period. (laughs) Good Mm -hmm. stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So that wraps our um, same seven. Thank you so much for participating. And we're going to dive right into the conversation. So, um, again, I'm super excited to have you on speaking about this topic of womanhood. So, I just want to open up with your project that you're working on. So share a little bit about what it is that you're doing because I truly believe it ties so greatly to this conversation. All right, so I got to do it the commercial way. All right, what's good, Harlem? (laughs) (laughs) It's your girl Kat (laughs) on the mic with Life Club. Yes. (laughs) And I'm bringing to you my first one-woman show, my one-woman comedic satire monologue called Ooh. I Am You. And it's going to be, well, it's supposed to be 45 minutes, but I just mm-hmm. added a story. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be an hour of me telling seven stories of the last 25 years of my mm-hmm. life and how I got where I'm at now at 45 with embracing Jehovah God and Jesus as my Lord and Savior mm-hmm. and how that being able to do that has really not only brought me here, but understanding my purpose and understanding that we're really all reflections of each other Mm. and being that sacrificial Mm. lamb to tell the stories that are funny, but not so funny Mm -hmm. that you could share and see that you're not alone. Like we're not Mm. really that special. We're special, but we're really not that Mm -hmm. special. Mm -hmm. Your, your shoot is not that (laughs) different (laughs) from her story. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. So me Mm -hmm. being okay is sharing these funny, not so funny stories. That's good stuff. And I I read Mm -hmm. that you call them life 
experiments yeah. versus life experiences. Mm-hmm. And I really, really, <laughs> really appreciate that. And I and I feel like what that said to me was that everything that we go through is not only a testing, yes, but it's also a lesson. It's yes. also gaining that understanding that you you described life as. It's also being able to glean from the things that we go through and not allow those things to define us. Right. So <laughs> when we speak about this idea of womanhood, I think, especially from what you said about, you know, your situation isn't really that much different from mine. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that we do to ourselves is that we expect to know it all mm-hmm. and to know everything. So my first question is, when did you realize hmm. that you were a woman? Okay. Like, what was that moment? What was that moment that defined you as a woman? Speaking for myself... I've had this issue with like looking super young. So I'm like, oh, girl. I'm like, <laughs> literally, I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, girl. you look 14. I'm like, bro, I'm bro, 36 yes. years old. <laughs> that is so drag. So, no, but it happens yeah. every day. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, just, mm-hmm. I think I, I grew up with that complex mm-hmm. of not feeling mm-hmm. like a woman because I didn't feel mm-hmm. as if I looked mm-hmm. the part. So I think we look at mm-hmm. certain things to define us as women. But you are born looking a certain way. Mm-hmm. You may be born yep. with certain gifts and talents and those things don't necessarily define you. But at the same time, I think we get trapped in this, I guess, cultural definition mm-hmm. of being a woman. So what was that moment like for you when you was like, you know what, I am officially a woman. And how do you even describe womanhood in and of itself? That was one of them questions I should have read. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was like, <laughs> um, wow, okay, I, woof, good question, I, I, yeah, because I don't even know if I've had that moment yet, mm. you know, I think mm. the burden of being a woman is that we are women mm. from day one, even when we don't want to mm. be, like, mm. I, my younger brother still calls me ma, and I'm like, no, I'm your sister, I'm mm. not your mother, mm. but, and we're like two, three years apart. Wow, you know, okay. but I've been taking care of him in it seems like, you know, all his life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So mm-hmm. I've been someone's mother, someone's woman. My my mother, you know, was a you know, same working woman's working mother as most mothers. So I was a latchkey kid, so was taking care. I'm the oldest of three, so I was taking mm-hmm. care of my brothers after school, you know, mm-hmm. when my wait before my mother came home and then I was on my own at fifteen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when I wasn't an adult to consider myself a woman mm-hmm. or not. what I, so, so I guess that even answers the question of what I think or what I define womanhood is. Mm-hmm. Womanhood is leadership. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is the, the freaking boss who holds and does everything because even when you do have the man in the house, you're still the one. You're the puppet master. You're still mm-hmm. the one who's coordinating the household, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and being his partner so that he can be outside doing what he does. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's a, I don't know when you're not freaking a woman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, they was, birth, they was marrying us off at 10, 13, um, I became a minister at 10 years old. So mm-hmm. was I a woman then? Wow. You know, I I don't know if I figured that that part out mm-hmm. yet. But I believe womanhood, I, I, I feel like we've been cursed with that even before we are women, which is another part of the problem. We're not being allowed to. I was never allowed to be a girl yet. Mm. Mm. You know, I think I was a woman since I came out, which sucks because mm. I'm tired mm-hmm. and I'm only 45 mm-hmm. and I'm exhausted. Mm. <laughs> That's good. I mean, it's so interesting because Mm -hmm. a lot of us have that same story as young women having to step into the role of, no, actually actually little girls having to step Mm -hmm. into the role of womanhood to where we don't even know the difference between the Mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And, And I think being a little girl is so vital to being a yes, woman. Girl. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. So what you said is is so real. I'm holding back tears because you know we <laughs> cry on this show. Okay, just like okay. we talked about okay. earlier. But it's so true and it's just giving me a moment to reflect internally about what defines me as a woman mm-hmm. or, or my paradigm towards mm-hmm. womanhood in and of itself. So that's just something to breathe on right mm-hmm. there because a lot of us are having this internal battle. That's- that's yeah. why I'm so big on my daughter being a kid. Mm. 
Because I want her, when she's asked that question as an adult woman, to get that real light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. You know, so when she's on some old, you know, curfew and, you know, the way she dress or if she's allowed to do certain things, it's because we have, we, we put so much pressure on our kids to, we say we don't want them to grow up, but then we put the pressures on them to grow up and we don't really allow them to be kids. Mm -hmm. And that's the shortest time. That, when they first start to even get privileges, so it's, that's like, what, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And then 18 so they got like two years mm. of really like freedom and no responsibility you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's good. and then prior to those two years when they are kids then they have what what 10 11 to 18 so they got eight years mm. of being a kid and then if you just even just think the whole time from one to 18 that's all they have to being a young yeah. person because the rest of their life is adulthood right. so why not we give them an opportunity to enjoy the shortest time mm, <laughs> that, that's, of their that's life. Like <laughs> spiritual bars right there. <laughs> <laughs> like that's revelation. Yes. It's that's so true. Because yeah. you'll be an adult far longer yes. than you ever will be a child. Lord. Mm. Wow. <laughs> OMG, like I want to be five years old again. Yes. <laughs> and play it back. And you play know? it back. <laughs> mm. oh. And I feel like this is speaking to you, (laughs) our newly graduated uh, young woman. What does that say to you? Like just in your the season that you're in in your life, how does that, Mm -hmm. I guess, hit not necessarily hit a nerve, but what does that speak to you? Yeah, like I'm, I'm now I'm thinking about like, okay, am I a woman? Like (laughs) I still feel like a little kid at the same time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I've been independent since I was like. 14 and okay. just thinking about it like yeah time flies so mm-hmm. it, it it really hits because now I'm really hitting like womanhood and mm-hmm. now I have to you know do a, even more things by myself so mm-hmm. yeah like yeah. Oh, life so is just, go ahead mm. now I was just saying you know life is just hitting mm-hmm. now you know mm-hmm. after school yeah. so Definitely. Yeah, trying to find yourself. It's real yeah. life it's in the yes. streets. <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> so I read about how you went through a relationship, mm-hmm. and I want to turn that corner okay. as far as relationships go and being a woman in a relationship. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes mm-hmm. as women, we get it twisted, and we kind of... I'm going to let you say your piece first because I've got <laughs> my opinions. Um, and we might be on the same <laughs> level. But what is life like being a woman in a relationship in a marriage being a mom and having Mm. to do all of those things you're an entrepreneur (laughs) you're a mom you're a minister like Mm -hmm. you carry so many hats Mm -hmm. how does that play out Mm. in I'm going to just be real hashtag okay. romantic relationships. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's just go okay. there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, see, then that's different. That's, that's, and, and I say that that's different on, on a couple of different levels. So, mm-hmm. um, first of all, I got to learn how to be sh- to the point because we only got an hour. <laughs> uh, and right there, that was a mouthful. So, so two parts to that. Um, this is the first time since I'm probably 17 that I've been single. Wow. Um, I've been single now for like two years and I'm freaking loving it. Yes. And not because I don't like men. Don't get it twisted. I love y'all. Y'all know that. But I have had some good ones. So I've been in relationships for pretty much mm-hmm. my whole life. My high school mm-hmm. boyfriend was four years. My husband was for eight, almost oh, wow. ten, nine okay. years. I was separated from him for four years. But during that four years, now I'm learning how to date. So mm-hmm. even though I'm not involved in a relationship, I'm still dating. I'm going through episodes. I'm mar- I'm dealing with things I ain't supposed to be dealing with. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then my next relationship, I was with him for eight years. Mm. So I've only really been single for two years, which has been such a relief and just such a breather mm-hmm. of really now maybe getting to know Cat, getting mm-hmm. to know Catherine. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so that's kind of been good. But being married and dating is two different things mm-hmm. because um the problem and i won't say problem but the the yeah problem <laughs> i've had dating um wearing all of those hats unfortunately but fortunately i'm i happen to be a good woman mm-hmm. i happen to be to be a good partner and since i am a good woman since i am a good partner i end up being in relationships that end up benefiting my partners mm-hmm. more than me mm-hmm. because I feel like as much as they support me and love what I'm doing, they don't want me to outshine them. Wow. Mm, so okay. now when we talk about dating, 
Um, that I think has been a problem or not a problem, but something I'm facing now because I meet beautiful men. I meet really great men, but I feel like I meet men who simply just want to look at me either. What can I do and benefit them or arm Mm. candy? You know, I'm just I'm just the cute girl to have on your arm or you just want to. Um, have sex with me. See, I was trying, I didn't do it the vulgar way, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And that becomes exhausting because, like, now, you know, I love the summer when it comes and I love, like, mm-hmm. Tashima got this cute little dress on. I will rock a little <laughs> tight dress because I'm a little bo- woman. So mm-hmm. we wear our tight dresses and, you know, show our little body. But now, when I'm loving doing that because I was self-conscious growing up, I didn't show anything. Mm-hmm. Now I do. But now I got to think, okay, when like, if I'm coming to Harlem, you already All right. know. I got. An, I can't wear this dress because it's too like. Like now, I understand what girls with big titties go through. Cause I ain't got big titties, but I wear no bra, so my nipples is always showing. And then I got thighs and butt, so they get funny about ooh that little girl with them thumb thighs. So I gotta be like, okay, I ain't trying to get that type of attention today. You know, I want them to look at me and, and be serious. Or why can't I have a meeting with someone who just about business and want to invest in what they say they uh, are impressed with, but it's all I just want to have sex with you or mm-hmm. trying to get you to my house or again how you could benefit me I haven't really had except for that relationship Mm -hmm. I haven't really had a partner I haven't had a partner Mm -hmm. I've had great relationships or Mm -hmm. decent relationships but I've been a great partner but I haven't had a partner yet Mm -hmm. in my business in what I'm doing I have a partner with my parenting I have a partner in my development because my my relationships have helped me understand who I am and mm-hmm. why I am certain ways. Like learning now about the women in my life probably effed me up when it came to leaving my ending my marriage the way that I did. Because mm. I didn't really allow us to go through the process. Mm-hmm. I was on some old shit. <laughs> he ain't about to mess my life up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Ten years, he ain't got it together yet. Mm-hmm. And I left him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't leave him because he was a bad husband. He wasn't a bad man. I left him because he, to me, in my head, didn't get his stuff together yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, 10 years, he ain't got it together yet. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> I'm out. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. in 10 years, and we got babies, well, how, how he supposed to... Go- yeah, it's a process. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a process. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I grew up with these women, with women who was like, <laughs> you better do your own, get your own. Mm-hmm. Don't bump these. You better make sure. Wow, okay. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. again, I was kicked out at 15, so I've been taking care of myself my whole mm. life so now even though I'm, I'm someone's wife I haven't learned how to be someone's partner because mm-hmm. I'm like he ain't about to mess yeah. me up yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying but I was his partner in his business Okay, he flourished to the next level in that way and then I felt like the next relationship did the same thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like I've never been able to have a partner that helped me flourish yeah. Yeah. in my business mm-hmm. personally yeah great but I'm I'm about my business just like you about your yeah, business. Yeah. And that's a problem with dating sometimes mm-hmm. because they feel like their hustle mm-hmm. is is bigger than my hustle. And mm-hmm. and on another note, I don't think we as women consider having a relationship that suits hopefully every part of us. For example, it might be cool to have somebody to talk to, mm-hmm. you know, or go to the movies mm-hmm. with or go to dinner with, but can that person fulfill you in the purpose in your life? Right. Can that per can you really parent with that person? Right. Can you mm-hmm. really explore with that person right. and, and travel with that person? Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we look at a potential mate from one area of our lives and not seeing it as the total person. And it's not to say that somebody is supposed to fulfill you, but they can definitely compliment yes, you. Ma'am. And I don't think that we look at those things in a relationship. Oftentimes we look at people to complete us. Right. Yeah. And not add. And not add to <laughs> us, you know. And that's <laughs> when we become depleted. Yes. Because we find ourselves giving so much and pouring mm-hmm. so much into somebody else. And we aren't really being fulfilled or our cup isn't being you know replenished right so that is definitely something that i've struggled with like you said Mm -hmm. in and out of relationships since you know puppy love 14 15 16 and you never really giving yourself a break to have a relationship with yourself let alone somebody else so i'm just so grateful that you were transparent with Mm -hmm. sharing that and also it just helps with this idea of 
being a whole person. Mm -hmm. You said, I may have had a partner in this area, but I didn't have a partner in another area. And that's Mm -hmm. just recognizing that you are a whole person. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. there's so many levels Mm -hmm. and so many like compartments that is you that when we do get connected in certain situations, we have to acknowledge those things about ourselves and even grow up in our own selves, you know? Mm -hmm. I realized that I wasn't ready for a relationship. You know what I mean? Like just being real. And Mm -hmm. I've gone through, you know, marriage and divorce and puppy love and Mm -hmm. dating and all these things. So where it was like, T, you need to chill out, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think going back to womanhood, sometimes we think a man makes us a woman. right? And that's not really true. Yes, I'm learning for you guys. (laughs) Yeah. It's just like, (laughs) I've been by myself like, for so long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just to hear your stories and how you guys been in relationships, you know, I guess it's a good thing that I'm, you know, taking my time mm-hmm. and just being by myself. Mm-hmm. And It's a yeah. really good thing. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and relationships aren't bad. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, I was, I, I, I am an advocate. When I hear mm-hmm. sisters complain about there's no good, I'm the first person to be like, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I haven't had bad relationships. My yeah. husband wasn't a good fit for me, but mm-hmm. he wasn't a bad man. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not a bad man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even when it comes to parenting, I've been fortunate and blessed that we co-parent. But I don't agree with everything he does as a parent. Like he don't agree with everything I do as a parent. Yeah. But we co-parent, and mm-hmm. our children, which I, I I love telling people this because it's very it happens. But we don't t- we don't educate that this happens. We don't co-parent where they're with him on the weekends. Mm. They live with him half the week, and they live with me half the week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they've done that for 12 years now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the whole 12 years ain't been good. We're not friends. Mm -hmm. We don't talk. You know what I'm saying? But we know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they with you. Thursday, Friday, Mm -hmm. they with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been able to produce some amazing mm-hmm. children and that's why I'm like what what would that look like if we could be friends mm-hmm. what, I, that's why I try to convince him and his lady like yo if we got such dope people and we ain't friends imagine mm-hmm. if we yeah. were yes. friends mm-hmm. if we was co-parenting for real for real we mm-hmm. were doing family vacations and portraits and joints <laughs> like that mm-hmm. the Jill and waiters you know like those that's that's not a foreign thing mm-hmm. because what we mm-hmm. if we're so called trying to teach you guys, the next mm-hmm. generation, then the reality is the first families may not be the lasting families. Mm-hmm. So since the first families might not be the lasting families, why don't we teach our children how to have successful second families? That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's a human experience. Amen. Mm-hmm. It's Life a human experiments. experience. Yes, wow. yes, yes. If you are just tuning in, this is Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. We have Miss Kitty Rose in the building. That's Damn. just like so like <laughs> Eartha <Damn>. Kit like <laughs> from Boomerang, right? <laughs> yes. No, um, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we are speaking yes. about wo- womanhood. And Brianna, you actually had um, a question. Yeah. What's up, young grasshopper? <laughs> <laughs> I just so I just wanted to know how did your childhood influence your adulthood? It jacked me up. <laughs> mm. Because I had too much responsibility, mm. too early, mm. too early, so you, and it, and it, it made me a little arrogant. Mm-hmm. So and do you feel like free now? I say, like more free. Wow, I feel that my freedom is coming, mm. and I'm preparing for my freedom. Like okay. I'll be free in two years <laughs> yes. when my daughter goes to college. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm preparing to have an empty house mm-hmm. for the first time wow. in my life. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. And literally your in, life, especially if you life. were like caring yeah. for younger siblings. In and my stuff. life. So, um, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I had a good life, period. You know, mm-hmm. so my childhood was, a, it was a, I had, I didn't have parents, whew, but I had the village. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I was in good schools. I had a great education and background. I had good friends. I had decent, you know, boyfriends. Of course, you got your one or two situations. Yeah. You, of course, you got your one or two things. Unfortunately, um, you know, child of rape, you know, all that other that stuff that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what my childhood did was it just, and unfortunately, I didn't have one. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have sleepovers. I didn't have girlfriends. I had one or two mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> in a different pocket. Yeah. I didn't, I, I don't, I was, I was a part of the track team for like a minute and a half, mm-hmm. maybe if that long. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I 
um, any performances I did growing up, there was never parents or family in the audience. Like I just, I wasn't, a, I, I don't, I didn't have a childhood. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, I don't know, which is probably why I'm so anal now with making sure my kids have theirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, exactly. it just, and, and, and I think it's a catch 22 because you really think you know it all when you're like 20 because you've been mm-hmm. taking care of yourself for so mm-hmm. long and you still don't know her. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And you walking around, can't nobody tell you nothing. That's why I said the arrogance. Walking mm-hmm. around like, what? Mm-hmm. I've been doing this. What you <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Real like, girl, bye. Mm-hmm. Sit down <laughs> and listen, which mm-hmm. is if I would have listened to my third eye, I ain't not thinking, <laughs> I mm-hmm. know it all. Yeah. You know, maybe some other things wouldn't have been so rough, you know. But, you know, you live and you learn. And it wasn't bad where, I, I, where it was messed up like mm-hmm. like so many other childhoods mm-hmm. i'm f- so fortunate but I, I i wasn't allowed to really have one i'm so um, grateful you didn't give the interview you know the job interview question mm-hmm. where you turn your weakness into a strength okay you said I'll, it, it jacked me up yeah. and, I, and that's that's your freedom yeah. yeah amen i'm not gonna cry okay but that is your freedom mm-hmm. And yes, mm-hmm. that's your freedom mm-hmm. and no and being free enough to admit that mm-hmm. because I think a lot of the pain that we go through um, as adults is not reconciling the hurt that we experience mm-hmm. in our childhood. Mm-hmm. And that is your freedom because you would not be able to speak about something that still is painful. Mm-hmm. You might remember the pain from it, mm-hmm. but it's not hurting right. you mm-hmm. and just your energy and your vibration mm-hmm. and your bright smile. Mm-hmm. Like, you would never assume that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or you would never put that on you because a lot of us are still in that 13-year-old mm-hmm. mindset mm-hmm. where we, we yeah. are still in chains to the things of the past mm-hmm. and the things and the people that hurt us. Mm-hmm. When it's like, okay, I'm an adult now. What am I going to do to make my adulthood what my childhood wasn't and mm-hmm. how am I going to pay that forward to my children right. or to yeah. the, the children in the village. Right. You or know? being appreciative of what you did have. Mm-hmm. Because exactly. there's, there's always what you did have. Mm-hmm. But we're so caught up in what we didn't yes. have that we yeah. forget to remember what we did have. It's so <laughs> true. Yeah. It's so true. And again, that mindset of not seeking out the good, not seeking out the light mm-hmm. is what's keeping us in darkness. Mm-hmm. So for you to be mm-hmm. able so to bad. say, girl, yeah. it really messed me <laughs> up. Mm-hmm. It's that is freedom. Yes, and Lord. that's freedom that not a lot of us can sit here and say that we have. And that's mm-hmm. the 30 year old, the 40 year old, yes, the 50 year old, mm-hmm. the 60 year old, the 70, 80 mm-hmm. and so on. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who are still in those chains of their childhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's simply because they don't share it. Mm-hmm. They don't share it. And just, you know, taking that full circle to this, to your, your show yes. and being able to <laughs> play those different roles mm-hmm. and those different characters and say it, I mean, and share it in, uh, a way that we can laugh at our pain, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. And being able to, mm-hmm. you know, grow from it. Um, so could you give us a little bit, oh, you know, a little I. sprinkle <laughs> about these characters um, that exist in this one woman? Well, I'm not playing characters. I'm okay. playing, I'm just telling my story. Okay. So it's seven different stories. Okay. Um, so I'll just give you a quick example. So it's so you're gonna sit in the audience, you're gonna be in the audience mm-hmm. and you're gonna cringe a little bit. Because okay. it's, it's a little shock value. Wow. Because all right, I'll give you an example. Like the new thing now, I feel like is everybody doing a one woman tour or a one mm-hmm. woman show, like mm-hmm. Wendy now. I was on a one woman's show. So mm-hmm. everybody's doing this. But telling stories is one thing. Telling stories where they're your stories also, mm-hmm. where you can see reflections, because the purpose still has to be what? Mm-hmm. And that's healing. Mm-hmm. I, the days of entertainment is over. Mm-hmm. The, the mm-hmm. days of blurring and distracting our people is over. Mm-hmm. So since we are distracted so easily by entertainment, then use the entertainment to heal. Yes. So this one woman's show is a way of me using my stories, which are your stories, mm-hmm. of looking at reflections of each other so that with the purpose of healing. I am not simply here to entertain. Mm-hmm. That's why I can be vulnerable of sharing these stories mm-hmm. because it's truly with the purpose of healing. So perfect example mm-hmm. to my young sister, because you might feel like this in a minute. You might not, mm-hmm. but you might. 
So here I am. How old do you? Twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four. Okay, so not really twenty-four. <laughs> more like, more like twenty, right? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm. One of those moments where I feel like you might can experience this. I'm a, I'm a young mother. I'm a new mother, mm. and I don't have any food in the refrigerator. Mm. And I'm mm. like, oh my goodness, what's what? When am I going to be able to pay the next bill? Mm. You know, nothing consistent and seeming like it's coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now I'm in the entertainment industry. So I'm I'm a model and I'm a dancer. I do videos. I'm mm. a background dancer. I've danced for X, Y, and Z. I do video. I'm, I go to MTV. Da 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 da. I've been to the club where I'm dancing and grinding on dudes. So I'm like, I'll try stripping. Okay. It's quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I dance already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what the... Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so my first experience of stripping, I made $50. Mm. Wow. I'm broke. Yeah. Did you get that part of the story? <laughs> something no, it ain't nothing. <laughs> with, the, with the HD up and double sticks, what she said, $50 ain't go, what that going to do? Give nothing. Milk, Girl, milk. buy. <laughs> Girl, buy. So, now, because I didn't realize that when you go to the strip club, you got to pay the, the club. You got to wow. pay the bounce. You got to tip out the bouncer. You got to tip out the lady. You got expenses walking a, in You got expenses <laughs> walking in to I the strip club. I didn't even know that part. I, they don't tell you. <laughs> wow. So okay. after all of the expenses, uh-huh. and then the fact that I'm I'm not as confident as I think. <laughs> so I'm like <laughs> shimmying along. <laughs> but... But it was an experience that's like, well, this is not going to work <laughs> <laughs> because that's not making any money. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But, again, you laughing. But, mm-hmm. you know, in the moment, <laughs> at the end of the night, <laughs> you know. It wasn't like, funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was an experience. Mm-hmm. It was an, a moment. It was something that I, I tried because I rationalized in my head. Mm-hmm. I could. And this is mm-hmm. fast. And then, I, and then in thinking, I'm like. I got to give a shout out to the strippers because that's an investment that I didn't Mm -hmm. even realize because they're like, well, in order for you to really make money, you got to invest. You got to get hair and shoes Mm -hmm. and clothes. Mm -hmm. You got to make a persona. And I'm like, but I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. What what you talking about? (laughs) I got to go buy a wig and I need milk. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's those type of stories that, you know, I, I or what about. You know, Uncle George and Uncle Ben, who ain't really your uncle, mm. you know, but your mother don't tell you that that's the guy who paid the telephone bill. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and because you don't need to know that that's the guy that paid the telephone bill, but then why not? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe now when I'm at 2021, maybe I won't use a guy mm-hmm. for the phone bill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because that, at the ultimate, at the end of the day, did you feel good using that guy? Mm-hmm. No. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That, when I've used men for money, it's not a good feeling. Mm-hmm. It does not feel good with your spirit. It does not yeah. feel good with your gut. So you might get a bill paid, you might get something done, but to, to be a user or to sit up in somebody's face because they will do something just mm-hmm. because... Your end result don't feel good. Mm-hmm. But if I never, as my, as your sister, as your elder, as your, you know, your big mama or Madi or whatever, tell you that feeling, mm-hmm. then why should I let you, when you 21, 22, and you don't have no food in your refrigerator, think that that's mm-hmm. an option? Yeah, I'm not saying it's not an option. But now know that, girl, if that's an option, go in there knowing that you got to financially invest in that endeavor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't just exactly. be like, I'm going to be a stripper. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or knowing that... Don't feel bad on yourself if you decide that you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because even the purest of us that you think would never think about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to think about the little Jehovah Witness girl. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Went to the strip club. But yes, the little Jehovah Witness girl, Mm -hmm. you know, went to the strip club. Now, I didn't become a stripper. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I could have. Yes. And there's Mm -hmm. just so much value in this, like, (laughs) 30 second to five minutes even if you thought about it you need a whole budget to be a stripper what? like hurt you thank you thank you thank you so, that's so what you much can when yes it comes to i am you <laughs> yes 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 so again let us know the name of the show as well as where people can get more information cool so the name of the show is hashtag I am you. No, no. <laughs> Hashtag I am you. If you go to any of my social media platforms, that'll be available on your website or however this mm-hmm. the link works. And you can share and, that. You okay, can share. well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Because I believe in the work, so I 
have put the work in branding. <laughs> so you could Google my butt. Okay. <laughs> Miss Kitty is. Rose, the Kitty Rose lifestyle, any of that platforms, and you'll find me. And because marketing is key when you are doing any new venture, I am all over the place. Mm-hmm. So there's not one place, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, that you will not find Miss Kitty Rose. So that's M-S-K-I-T-T-Y-R-O-S-E, Miss yes. Kitty Rose. Um, either Miss Kitty Rose 1 or Ms. with a Z Kitty Rose <laughs> or just Google Kitty Rose or Google, Google the Kitty Rose Kitty lifestyle Rose. or Google hashtag I am you because yes. everything again is about branding and those hashtags now mm-hmm. so you'll find because the, the plan is I'm doing four shows here in New York okay uh, my first show out of New York is in Miami in November nice um, so from November to like the spring I'll be in Miami I'll be in Colorado I'll be in Virginia nice. but to dream big so I'm putting out there world mm-hmm. we are taking this show international I want to go to Brazil I want to go to Africa awesome. I want to go yes. to Brussels I yes. want to go everywhere because remember I'm telling you I'm planning for the second phase of my life I mm-hmm. want to be on my own yeah. so <laughs> when I'm on my own I just want to travel and eat and maybe have <laughs> sex sometimes every now and then every now and then <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you we appreciate you so much I was up already yes Yo! it goes way too fast right Yo! way too fast <laughs> Brianna, Brianna where can everybody find you yes you can find me on Instagram at adore me Brie underscore oh, adore me. Yes. yes 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 <laughs> and you can find me at tashimajones.com all of my social media and contact information can be found there until next Next time, remember your greatness. Talk soon. I am Tashima Jones, and you've been listening to Life Club. Thank you for tuning in.